So hello, Alex. Um, so we are having a little talk together about our paths, our dancing paths for the series of podcasts from the ICMTA, right? Yeah, thanks for asking me. How brilliant to have a reason to have a good chat with you. Yes, it's been a while. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. So I, you know, people ask me a lot how did you found the dance or did the dance found you and uh, yeah i think it's just nice to start with that have a little history of your path a little history yeah way back isn't it for both of us <laughs> yeah. um, so i was um at art college and i wasn't that close at the time to my mum particularly we were sort of um you know she was doing her things that I felt I was a bit dismissive of all these therapy things that she did and things like mm -hmm. that and I was off uh doing fine art printmaking and seeing bands and living in a city in Manchester in the UK and then I was starting to research about sacred dance for my dissertation that I was writing and I thought wait a minute doesn't my mum do something like this so I kind of went and talked to my mum and she'd been dancing with Yakov and Susanna uh, when they first wow. started because she'd met Susanna through dished out therapy so at the time they were organizing and teaching five rhythms long before they set up their own school and um, so the first thing I did was a cycles weekend in London with Gabrielle Roth and 120 people. Oh my God. That's like a good start. <laughs> <laughs> oh Ryan was playing the drums and I was like, I was just so heavenly, deep, all in, loving it at home. And I felt like she saw me all the way through and, mm. um, that was like, I was just like, right, that's it. I found it. Uh, that was, I was 22. Wow, that's beautiful. And then? <laughs> and then um, I did some, um, well, my life fell apart a bit, maybe leaving art college and wondering what it is to be an artist, but also, you know, a bit of heartbreak and things. And I ended up moving back to Manchester. I did some more, did some workshops when I could with Susanna and Yakov. And when Gabrielle came back, I did mirrors. And um, I started teaching a dance class, which wasn't uh, supposed to be five rhythms. My friend and I would teach it. And whenever she taught it, it would turn into a kind of meta bhavana kind of meditation, but slinky. And um, whenever I taught, it would turn into five rhythms. So then I told Gabrielle what was happening. You know, it wasn't in writing, but uh, this was my practice. I was dancing all the time. And, and so then I had this quite amazing interaction with her where she said, yeah, keep doing what you're doing. Um, I love you. I'm honored. This is the right thing. When there's a next training, then come. Um, so that was my beginning was in a way a bit more like people who are doing the space holding um, path now before they do the whole teacher training that I was sort of uh, teaching a creative thing and then the five rhythms kept just coming in because they were mm -hmm. so hugely alive in me and my practice. Wow and then we met in the training. We there on the training and we were yeah more or less the same age and uh you know it was great to meet there wasn't it at the beginning yeah. of 97. Yeah. how did you how did you begin then before I met you um I was in the I was in theater school and I always wanted to go uh to be a dancer but you know in that time I I only knew ballet or modern dance and you had to start when you were six. So by the time I was 14, I thought now I'm too old. And by the time I'm, I was 18, I thought now I'm definitely too old. <laughs> 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 uh, 
And then I went to theater school and there we had some dance improvisation and that woke me to, um, to like, oh, there is some possibility to express myself through movement. Uh, and then in the same week, I was doing my final theater play, directing a play, and I kept trying to make a choreography. You know, I was I was much more into movement and how how bodies and of course it was a performing and not not like well you know it was to be seen by others. But and then one woman who was who was acting in my play, she uh, she said uh, there is somebody coming to Amsterdam, and I think you really like that. And that was Yaakov. And then in the same week, somebody gave me the book of Gabriel. I think you like this book. And then uh, and then I went to to dance with Yaakov. And then back in the train, I, it was so it was really funny because. I realized I didn't have a ticket, a train ticket. I forgot to buy a train ticket. And uh, and it was like a double train. And I saw the the guy who came to check my ticket. I saw him coming in and I and I I hear this voice. You just move your feet. You can move your feet. Just <laughs> move your feet. <laughs> so I went walking through the whole train. <laughs> so in a way I was dancing through the train. Till we uh, arrived at the station, and um, and then in the evening I wrote something down because I was in my final year of theater. I wrote something down. I want to do something with consciousness and with breath and with movement. And I didn't. It was not like I want to be a five rhythms teacher. You know, I didn't even know that. Yeah. Yeah. But um, yeah. I had a little train thing as well. That very first evening that I went to um, dance with Gabrielle in London, um, I felt so blown open by the end and I kind of walked down to the tube and got on the tube and I was just gazing into the eyes of all <laughs> people. <laughs> oh yeah, I can imagine that, yeah. <laughs> wow. Luckily nothing bad happened, but it was just like, I was definitely in a, um you know in quite an altered uh state you know and yeah I yeah yeah remember that evening and just staring at these people with kind of eyes of love you know yeah it's amazing how what gets awakened without us having any theory or knowledge about it but that it's just suddenly the 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 spirit the body knows like ah oh, yeah this is this is what is needed now yeah, I remember in that first workshop also that because it was a heartbeat and there was this and we did that thing up and down the floor, you know, so and so I was in the end, I already danced my my journey and then I was watching the other people coming in and then at one point there was this woman and she stopped. She didn't move anymore and she was like really shouting. And and I, I just came there to dance, you know? So I was, <laughs> I remember looking at her and I was like, yeah, but why don't you just keep moving? <laughs> and, it, and just later I got in touch with like really big feelings and you know that they come up when you move your body. But that first time I was totally innocent and yeah, just loving and enjoying it all. I remember uh, there was a guy who once came, he used to come to my Manchester class a long, long time ago, and he would come kind of like in a shirt, you know, he probably would normally go to a nightclub, you know, and he kind of tried coming to the class and, he, and uh, then someone, there was a guy who was really crying, you know, something had happened that had really touched him and he was, and this, this, uh, the guy in the shirt came over to me and said, uh, what's up with him? <laughs> And I said, oh, well, you know, sometimes when we dance, we can we can find a connection with our feelings. You know, um, he is OK. You know, he's yeah. just, just feeling upset. And this guy went, uh, what can be done for him? Yeah. <laughs> I thought, oh, it's like it's such a it's sweet in a way when you have people who come in with these new eyes, a bit like we're talking about. Yes, yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah. It's still so valuable, isn't it, when someone comes in and they're like, well, 
oh, what can be done? And, and yes, can. yeah. And so he doesn't actually need anything. He just needs the space that it's all right to have feelings and uh, that he, he feels all right to express them. You know? <laughs> that's, that's big, huh? That's big. I mean, in that way, nothing changed really there is still people they as soon as they feel a tear coming they they leave and then I'm like no no but actually that's what we invite you know that's what we welcome and it's you know like this last uh, strange few years that we've had where people mm -hmm. meet all the time and then uh, they begin to meet again in the dance space and I don't know if you found this, but I found that when we returned after the pandemic, everything was a bit overwhelming for people at first, you know, having the loud music and all the other bodies and and uh, trying to work out what was what was too close or whether the window was open or something. Yeah. And then gradually you could sort of see people's nervous system kind of yes totally you know, starting to relax again and just finding the simplest human needs being met by by time in these rooms you know where you can oh you can be yourself you can yeah. witness by each other you can find connection you can express things and what a strange situation for us all to have that kind of taken away or made so much more difficult and then return yeah. again, you know yeah yeah I, I just I'm, I just was teaching uh, last weekend in the name of love and that workshop I kind of designed it during the pandemic um, that I was like wow what's happening to humanity you know but yeah it was it was really intense it was really intense yeah you know Gabrielle Roth used to talk a lot, didn't she, about that there was a time of chaos coming, that, that mm. okay, we've had a couple of thousand years in staccato with this, the big daddy religions, she said, didn't she, and all that, and, and that there's a big time of chaos coming. And I can remember thinking, this was really interesting, and I really understood what she meant, you know. <laughs> I didn't and there really, it was, yeah. I didn't really think it was coming in our lifetime, and then here we are with, uh, you know, with climate change accelerating and with uh, so many things changing, and yeah. so many things that we thought we could rely on being revealed as not not what we could rely on and then but we we both know the power of chaos as a creative mm -hmm. transformation force as well so it's like I feel like I keep kind of um keep being reminded again and again that oh yeah mm -hmm. I've been I've been making friends with chaos for a long time you know mm -hmm. um, I mean that each example of it in in the rest of life is easy though huh yeah, it's different. It's different that dancing chaos or when it really hits in your life, right? It's um, if you say about climate change, I'm I'm like, yeah, how I'm curious because it's a question I I ask myself a lot. Like, how how do we um, not so much bring on the dance floor what is happening in the world, but how, how do we integrate the dance and our struggles with the environment, with diversity, you know, all, all the wars going on, you know, how, how, how do we, yeah, blend it in our experience without, yeah, without starting a political movement or something, you know? Or without people, like you like you said, <laughs> thinking, oh, I'm coming for a nice dance and then <laughs> straight away. Yes. You know, yeah. plunge yeah. into some very challenging uh, exercise or something. I mean, I suppose I think that a lot of the thing, a lot of the benefits of dance practice are even more important really with the, as things change and, uh, to be able to connect with um, 
connect with ourselves and what we need and connect with other people maybe on the other side of a divide one way or another and mm. still feel really connected and to to kind of keep practicing how to keep being creative as things change all of these sorts of things you know yeah yeah and I always tell myself that you know when we do our work in 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 a workshop with like what 25 30 people I always hope and I and somehow I trust that the work they do for themselves it it will ripple out to their surroundings and therefore yeah I mean, at the moment, I, I've been doing, um, like, outside of my dance work, so I've been volunteering with a charity that works with refugees here, and it's, mm. been, it's been, like, just one of the best things, really. Are you dance with them? You dance with them? No, ma mainly at the moment, I'm, like, I've got a little two-year-old that I'm babysitting quite a lot, little Syrian girl, so I babysit when her parents are having English lessons, and I'm organising a lot of the volunteers as well, but my main favorite thing is being with her but yeah. what I'm doing with her is feeding into my teaching a lot like at the moment she's got those shoes that light up on the heels so she's oh, yeah. walking along and she wants to see her heels all the time you know and so you're watching this <laughs> so I'm like bringing that into my group you know okay we're, we're moving the head the spine and the heels and we're going to do it like this you know and uh, what rhythm is that Alex <laughs> Say it's some kind of chaos flow. <laughs> <laughs> nice. But, um, I suppose uh, you know it, it's good if the if things go both ways. I suppose so that we can feel that the work that we do within the dance can ripple out, and also our our different experiences in the world, whether it's with friends or the community where we live or our family can can keep Come in. coming in informing us so that we're not kind of too insular you know yes yes exactly yeah inclusion yeah mm. not easy always is it that inclusion no it's not easy no because um it's you only see what you know right and um, if if you're if you're used to a certain kind of people or certain, then then you only see that in a way. Yeah. So I think it's good to 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 open up to make the dance floor as inclusive as possible. However, we do that to learn from each other and to be open. I had an interesting thing this year because I realized. Like apart from my little classes here where I live, um, I've not been teaching a city class or not been teaching very many beginners because I've had a lot of four or five day workshops, things like that. So you're not getting as many new people. So I decided to teach at a festival. So it was at a music festival and a friend was organizing one field within the festival. So we had all the live music, you know, I had Joe and Jake and Simon, we had all these percussion set up and I did four sessions at a festival and I said to the people that were helping look please you can explain a bit what it is but I just want people to be able to walk in you know so yeah. I don't want there's no point in teaching at a music festival and having it trying pretending it's a class in a hall no it's and so someone might come in for any 10 minutes of the session and, and they might walk in with their baby or their dog or their beer or whatever and I was like yeah 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 how can we serve this situation yes and it was yes. it was quite a thing but really exciting you know mm -hmm. to have that challenge and to have the like the benefit of meeting all those people who didn't know what they were walking into they just perhaps heard the drums or saw mm -hmm. a load of people in there thought they'd see what it was <laughs> <laughs> yeah beautiful beautiful that reminds me because I was just thinking while you were talking it's like oh yeah we teach in so many different cultures you know because uh, many of of the teachers they travel quite a bit and um, a few years ago I was in uh, in Jordan 
-hmm. and um, I was going to teach there a workshop but I, I I also wanted to do something for the community you know I thought I'm not just gonna go there and have a workshop for the people who can pay it but um something for the community so the the woman who organized me like Randa she's actually uh she's a teacher now, teacher now yeah. yeah um she um she organized some kind of uh workshop a two-hour class in 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 um in I, I don't even know exactly but there was a lot of women it was only women women coming in but they all came in with um I don't know how you say it in English. Help me. A hijab or some sort of headscarf. Yeah. Yes, and like long, long dresses, you know, and you know, there was not a lot to be seen. So I was like, okay, how are we gonna do this? And then uh, and then they were all in. I think there was about 20, a bit more, maybe. And then somebody closed the door and uh, and the, and they said, uh, okay, we start. And then all the clothes went off. It was so touching. And there they were in their leggings and in their, it was so touching. And they were like talking all the way through, you know, and normally you would say <laughs> like, no, we're not talking, but it was so, but I thought, no, I just, I just let them. Yeah. And it was so, so touching to, to see how they melted and how they enjoyed. And um, yeah, it was really, really beautiful. Yeah. So, you know, we're so lucky when we get a chance to, you know, be invited in to a different culture. Exactly. That's actually, what I love so much about too. the traveling. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. It's so different from feeling like a, a tourist who's just following, yes. you know, some sort of very outsider experience, you know, yeah. and to to get invited to places and to be there, you know, um, right in people's lives. It's so lovely. And really, my international teaching started when you asked me to cover for you in Italy and uh, 10 years ago. And yeah. I'm very grateful for that moment because I did not know that I wanted that at all mm. at that time yeah and then after I'd had that experience it really woke something up in me a lot and I I love traveling and teaching I love being able to just put down the um you know some of the things of being a mum and everything and just put that down for a few days and to go and really inhabit a lot of different parts of myself and have yeah. that you know that very fortunate thing of meeting so many different people and doing the work that I love I mean thanks Willa May that's been oh, that's <laughs> really nice. well very welcome <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah I I do I try to plan my workshops a little bit more uh, close to my home so I can go there by train I mean still Europe yeah but I'm really looking for um for ways to travel by train um because that that is sometimes a little bit strange in our world, you know. That's when when we trained. I mean, we flew over the whole world just to do a workshop and to receive trainings. Um, yeah, and then but that doesn't. It was really funny because it was just before COVID that I wrote in my newsletter like I can't I can't take my I can't do this anymore. So I will teach more you know and then I didn't fly for what two years <laughs> but um yeah so that's that's a little bit like oh yeah how how am I gonna do that but the train is okay I I love training yeah trains are also okay I love being in the sky though <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah I really do love it when I, I I'm sort of so my teenager is still uh, 14, nearly 15. So I'm yeah. sort of in that place of I still need to go away and come back. You know, I can't really go oh, yeah. away and uh, stay away for long, longer periods traveling between. So at the moment, um, I guess I'm still doing that quick, quick go, quick come back sort yeah. of uh, pattern quite a lot. And I'm hoping that in a few years it'll be 
really lovely to be able to maybe be away for two or three months and uh, mm. you know, just travel in a certain area teaching and sketching and being with people and not need to always be coming back here mm. um, when no one particularly might need me in the same way. <laughs> yeah. I'm curious because I, I noticed that, um, uh, you know, we met when we started the Five Rhythms training and uh, over the years, I, um, I, I also trained the more shamanic practice, uh, systemic ritual, mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and then open floor. Um, and recently, I also became a trauma therapist. So I work also one on one with people. Um, and I'm, I'm curious because I know you do the sketching, but you, of course we all kind of make a different blend of who we are and what we, what we offer. So yeah, I'm, I, I like to go into that a little bit more. How does it, because I know that the trauma therapy, for example, is, it's also about stock, stock energy, but it has a whole different approach and it's much like, much less activation than the rhythms. It's way more quiet and listening and um, giving words, also naming what is going on. Mm -hmm. And that's interesting with the rhythms, right? They, it's like an experience and that's, that's it then. And, and then, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. I mean you know, I've definitely done less kind of other trainings or seeking, seeking in some of the ways that you've done. Um, like, uh, so labyrinths are something that I've always been mm -hmm. really um, uh, drawn to, you know, and I remember even on our first training going to the labyrinth in Grace Cathedral in San Francisco and and um, so sometimes I will include that in something that I'm doing, building a labyrinth and uh, doing something with the with the group and including that kind of contemplation thing. I've done some things like sand art with friends here. That's that kind of thing. Um, I mean, I was a visual artist and I still am really. And for a lot of years, especially when living in the woods, so really not having a lot of dry space or a lot of wall space or anything, uh, I kind of really went into sketchbooks rather than working big mm -hmm. that's still been the main thing I've been doing but I have started printmaking again sort of 30 years later <laughs> than when we we're talking about when I first uh, was at art college and that's been really nice to come to come out of the sketchbooks and to feel so rich with all these resources of everything I've been gathering for so many years that can then get moved into a different yeah and live music is also a big, uh, big one for you. I think you work a lot with live music, no? Yeah, exactly. In different ways over the years, um, you know, my partner Joe's uh, sort of, as you know, quite uh, exceptional, crazy sort of percussionist, and my son as well. And um, but I've often really liked working with live music, but then mm. I also really like being away on my own and without anyone unrelated. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and so I've got these two different, and also Joe doesn't really like flying or traveling in a lot of ways. So there's different strands have developed in that. Um, and, you know, like, I suppose we're, like we're saying about different things in life I mean I've learned a certain amount of things around say you know approaches to trauma and things through this volunteering with refugees yes I mean we don't need we don't specifically need trainings but I just know that my work is I mean I work a lot with the with cycle with the cycles of the seasons yeah. uh, I work a lot with the elements you know fire earth water air so uh, there is a lot of other uh, resources that 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 are coming in my work in, in so that I be able to yeah for the people there is a certain depth and a huge field of exploration 
Um, I think that's what's so exciting though, isn't it? With it's like um, that, you know, with the map of the five rhythms that I work with, all these, you know, related maps that you're working with, as well as that one. There's a simplicity there, but they they can open up to so much, you know. Yeah. And just even to find a slight renaming of something or just a just a slightly different look at it. Um, last night I was including the flowing shadow in a class that I was doing, but we I talked about it as laziness. Uh, which is a slightly different way of naming it, but it was funny, you know, saying, let's see if we, let's welcome our laziness, see if we can luxuriate in taking our time. Yes. And it was really interesting to see how, how people, like somebody said, oh, I've been lazy with one other person before, felt like we've both been in our lazy selves, but I've never been in a lazy self with a whole group of people. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. And so I just feel like sometimes there's there's ways to kind of just open things up slightly differently, and there's loads of discoveries or healing or mm. um, you know something that can keep keep things alive because yeah. so much of it is is kind of it's shared humanity isn't it really that we're touching on you know yeah yeah mm, beautiful yeah that we think oh it's not just me yes exactly again and again <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Mm, yeah. and do you feel like like those like the rit systemic ritual and things is that mainly in certain workshops that you use that or does that come through in all kinds of ways well in certain workshops i i i name it that i make a combination um but of course it changes my way of of watching a group of seeing of seeing mm. and also making a it's it changes my way of making a um connection with the fields included the invisible <laughs> so yeah but in some workshops i really name like five rhythms and you know yeah or open floor and well open floor i don't combine so much actually open floor is more in itself but systemic ritual and the, and the rhythms is beautiful and then i combine it with the seasons i have this ongoing group here like every equinox we have a workshop and um yeah i really love it because systemic ritual is more about holding a choreography um and 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 then we pray we sing or i play some music there is not a lot of movement um and you just let the energy flow in a the energy is able to flow in a different way you know if if you're always used to stand like like here with somebody here or suddenly you 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 go and look at each other instead of shoulder to shoulder it's a whole it's very simple yeah, but then to stand in that place and to feel a shift happening is really powerful. And through the dance, people are open up more, of course, because yeah. they already feel more in their body. They're more in their heart. So, yeah. So I really, I really like. I really like because then I can be creative with the seasons and with the elements and with the rituals and with the dance and you know and then la 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 mix it all and <laughs> yeah i i love it <laughs> yes beautiful yeah and so, i'm yeah. gonna ask you uh you know i know i'm talking in the five rhythms map here but is there certain rhythms that have become your favorite or less favorite over the years because I'm just curious because we've been we've been so involved for so long mm -hmm. um, if, if, has it changed how you identify with different rhythms 
Um, yeah. You know, I had some uh, I had some physical uh, problems in the last uh, few years. Actually, I hope they'll be over soon. Yeah. So, and of course, my body is changing as well over the years. So, uh, so my dance is uh, changing. So, I think, therefore, that I that I'm less. Uh, no, not less, but therefore i'm connected in a different way with the rhythms it's more like in in the in like energy wise you remember when gabrielle you know she just did one movement and the whole group was in awe because that one movement had so much power and so much intensity and i think the more and more uh i i i understand it and i feel that in my own body as well so sometimes i don't I can still be sad sometimes that I cannot have that full on blown away chaos and kind of like, yeah, you know, <laughs> and then, but then luckily enough, there is other younger people on the floor who can do that. Yeah. Um, so that's not really answering your questions. But so that's the whole, that's the whole map. And uh, according no, I think each rhythm has so much depth and so much. I mean, there's so much in me. I can't even talk about. I I, I really right. see right <laughs> through the lens of the five rhythms. I mean, uh, maybe that's a bit scary, but that's that's yeah, that is a bit. That's true. Like you're right in the essence of them all, or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm getting into that wise face of my life now. <laughs> the woman in the fifties. Wise face, yeah. <laughs> No, but no, 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 but I mean, it's like the, um, a woman in their 50s, you know, come on, Alex, yeah. you can do it. <laughs> own it, own it. Well, I do seem to like stillness a lot more than mm. I used to. I, you know, I didn't used to rest there long before I'd be, uh, you know, back in restless again. And yeah. um, I definitely crave it a lot more, I suppose. So yeah. some of these things are interesting. Yeah. But then I had friends my age who during the pandemic kind of just really got like, oh, I've realized all I want to do is be in my garden, you know. Yeah. I was like, what are you talking about? You know, I really want to <laughs> go to loads of cities and do stuff and be with people. And I'm just yeah. Like, I feel like in some ways I'm not totally um, in this yet. <laughs> <laughs> I remember uh, years ago I had a, I went on a vision quest you know four days and nights in yeah. nature and uh, and I remember thinking when I ever get out of here I'm never going to sit still in my life again <laughs> 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 Yeah <laughs> No that's changing it's for the first time in my life actually that I live on my own you know the last 3 years and that is um, because if you say what rhythm, I mean, living on your own, you, of course, I have more time to listen to myself and my own rhythm. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's, yeah, I'm very, I, in, I, I think I'm very like flowing, lyrical, still, okay, well, yeah, chaos is all over as well, but no, I know them all now. Staccato also. I know how to how to do it. I know how to get behind my laptop and get things done. Yeah. 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 Make that phone call. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. Uh, well, I don't know how we're doing for time. Feels like we've maybe been talking for a while, doesn't it? I don't know either. Can you not see it somewhere? Yeah, but I forgot when we began. <laughs> it's half past three no it's definitely 45 minutes <laughs> definitely okay well have we got anything we want to say as we finish then i suppose no i hope uh, that the people who listen uh, enjoy as much as i did um it was really yeah really nice thank you yeah such a lot of warmth and uh 
shared you know shared experience shared yeah. environment yeah, yeah absolutely lovely and just love to everybody's uh dancing feet and uh hope hope uh we still get out there and meet loads of new dancers eh? yes <laughs> <laughs> lots of love thank you alex bye bye bye, -bye. bye.